What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy Rashad coming back at y'all with one of these new um, videos. I just came up with an idea. Me and my friend was talking, and um, it was just like, I was just telling him, I said, man, you know, it was a lot of shoes that was hot before Jordan's. And he, because he was asking me, he said, do you think the sneaker game would be where it is if it wasn't for Jordan? And I was telling him, I said, man, the sneaker game was huge before Mike came in there. Um, you know, Clyde the Glide had shoes back in the 70s. Uh, Air Force One was actually an 82 shoe. Um, the um, top 10 was actually a 79 shoe, which actually Nike bit off the top 10 with the uh, Air Force One. But um, I'm not saying I was around back then. I just know what I just know what I know. Like old boys say, if you know, you know. All right. So we gonna uh, I'm since. Some of these viewers and a lot of these um, YouTubers are kind of young. Um, I'm going to go through some of the shoes that were really, really hot. You know what I'm saying? Before Mike was ever on the uh, scene. So I'm going to get to that right now. All right. One of the shoes that I'm going to go with right now is going to be the Air Force. The, this is actually Charles Barkley's shoe back when he was... Um, in the Olympics, that's where it come from. The uh, anyway, the colorway that I have here is from his uh, time on the Olympic team. Um, this is a dope shoe, you know. The 180 they trying to take from that. Yeah, your boy do wear shoes though, you know. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, they try to take from that, and uh, they came with this. The next shoe I want to talk about is the Nike Indestruct, which is uh, Dennis Rodman's shoe, which was hot. When I was a kid, a lot of people had these. Because you got to understand, like, Mike Jordan's came out like one. I think the first one that cost 150 was the 12s. And I think the 11s like 130. Uh, but these was like 100 back then. Excuse me. So a lot of people had those. Um, the next shoe I'm going to get into is my favorite player of all time is Jason Kidd. <clears throat> Um, Jason Kidd, man, got that eye on it for the all because he was good court vision. You see the kid on the tongue, just a live shoe, man. I've had this shoe for almost 10 years now, uh, lots of wear on it, still excellent and comfortable. Um, it's just a great shoe all the way around. Um, one of my other favorite players, and these two guys actually played on the same team together, Penny Hardaway. And I pulled this one out because this is to me the dopest colorway of the two. Uh, a lot of people, this shoe was more popular than the one back then. A lot of people didn't have a one. The two was the one that took off. Uh, this shoe was actually 150 with the Michael Jordans back then. One of the guys who was on his team was, was, uh, Scotty Pippen. That's another, that's one of Pippen's shoes. Um, and it was a dope shoe. Um, if you ask me, it's got a lot of gimmicky stuff to it. Uh, you see that full length Air Max. That shit's so uncomfortable. It's pathetic. And they, they, they really need they bust wolf for that. And I'm going to come on over here. The next shoe is going to be a real monument. It's the Penny. Um, came out that same year as those Penny 2s. Uh, he wore these in the playoffs, which were the Nike Air Foam Posits. And one of my other ones is Grand Hill. Grand Hill was huge. Now, a lot of people want to associate the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with the Jordans, but really, the Fresh Prince, when Will Smith was on there, he wore them. He wore everything. He wasn't just wearing Nikes at all. <laughs> and, of course, the Dennis, um, the, uh, David Robinson, excuse me, those two guys did play together. All right, but anyway, I made a mistake there. But this is the uh, David Robinson, and I got this colorway because it mostly matches the um, Spurs colorway. One other shoe that was huge back when, this is more so high school, was the uh, Nike uh, Flight Posit 2, which was really huge. Don't get me wrong, the Flight Posit 1 was huge too, but the pair that I have is coming apart so bad, I didn't want to pull it out. Um, but yeah, this shoe is uh, pretty amazing. It was really comfortable. Another guy who had a, a sweet, this was Kevin Garnett's shoe, by the way. Another guy who had a hell of a shoe, hell of a shoe run is... Um, Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson had these questions come out. And, dude, these gave Jordans a run for their money. I got so many colorways in this shoe. It's pathetic. But these was killing. These were killing. You know, a lot of people had those. The ones, the twos, 
the fours was really popular. That's when he won the MVP. That's what they call it, quote unquote, the step overs. Um, but these and his twos were just like his second shoe was just big time staples in the uh, sneaker game. Um, another one underrated is the Tim Hardaway. Oh, I kind of got y'all a little glimpse of what the next shoe was. Uh, yeah, with the Tim Hardaways. Um, these were called. Uh, the Air Raids, and these were made for outdoor use, man. I've, I've worn these a few times. I mean, they they pretty live. They pretty live. Uh, this shoe came out, I want to say, at 93 or 94 when I was in elementary school. They had one that was black and yellow. My mom wouldn't get it from me because he played for the Golden State Warriors at the time. But, um, yeah, this was uh, a dope shoe, man, really dope. Um so big time. Nike was big during when I was coming up, but Reeboks, the pumps were big. But the pumps was like more so when I was like around in like the first grade, you know. And then I didn't even have the pumps. I had the LA Gears because they was live. And that's what I'm saying. There's so many shoes out here, the Beyond Jordans. Uh, and it, it's crazy. And this here is the controversial uh, Air Bacon, man. Really controversial shoe. Uh, because when it first came out on this part here, it had air written like in fire, but in um, Arabic, uh, in their beautiful writing, it looked like God, like Allah. So therefore, we did not. Uh, they had to scrap that shoe, and I ain't never get a pair of those with that on it. But you know, those were live. Uh, I got me my uh, one honorable mention. I'm going to come on over here to my uh, grandma Ma's, uh, which are, and this is just, a, I do have the Charlotte Hornet colorway, but this is the one I had out. Um, this is the grandma Ma's. Back in the day, they had the React juice back here, and it was actually a liquid. So this was like the first technology fuse shoe that I can remember back in the day. And they actually, um, so really well and it was like when i was i wanted this shoe bad when i was a kid but they were about a hundred dollars and uh you know for me to be in third grade i think when these came out um i <laughs> mom wasn't trying to spend no hundred dollars on those shoes now a lot of people you know like really i don't realize this class of 97 pack here as well that you know they, they associate them with the movie he got game but he gave he got game actually came out 98 and they was rocking 97 shoes in there. Um, just like they talking about the He Got Game 13s and all. That shoe was out way before that movie came out. So it's hard for me and a lot of the older sneakerheads. And I don't even feel like we old like that. We just in our 30s. Um, and uh, hard for us to associate them shoes with these uh, with these movies that came out when we was kids. But yeah, I, I love this shoe here. And it's called the Aereo Jam. For the youngsters out there who really don't know, you know, too much about that shoe. But, um, yeah, I just, I, I thought that this would be a smooth little video to go over. There go my little Big Shot slippers. Um, yeah, I thought this would be a, a nice little video to put together for y'all. Just go through a few things in my collection that I felt like was pretty uh, nostalgic and come from when I was a little bit younger. Um, and getting shoes way before Michael Jordan. That's why my collection is is diverse because I didn't come up with only Jordans at all, you know, and I kind of feel bad for, like, some of these kids because that shoe became, uh, the brand became, the shoe didn't turn into a brand. Now, <laughs> it wasn't a brand back when we was kids. When I was a kid, it wasn't a brand. It didn't become a brand, I think, until 13, to the Air Jordan 13 or something like that. So after 13 years... <laughs> Of, of decent shoes, because not all of them solid to me. Um, shit, the, the nine, well, that's not a solid shoe to me, the nine. And I'm not hating on anybody who like nines. If you like nines, that's your prerogative. Um, but nines is not a solid shoe. It didn't do well back in the day. The tens didn't do well back in the day. Um, the twos didn't do good back in the day. Uh, a lot of people talk about the ones, but... <laughs> like they was like they was fire back in the day, but they weren't. They were just cheap back in. They were that, they weren't cheap cheap, but they were like sixty bucks for a, a, um, a shoe that uh, came in a multitude of colors. That's what helped the Jordan One sale was the fact that 
Jordan 1 was like one of the first shoes to come light blue, black, red, black, and blue. Um, it, a lot of shoes didn't come like that. You know what I'm saying? So when that shoe came out and was doing all of that at 60 bucks, 59.99 back then, excuse me, it, it, that was what made that shoe really popular at the time. But, uh, um, but the, um, and you know, they had the video, the, the, mo- the, um, the commercial of him flying around the world. So, you know, when we was kid, we would jump off the porch saying we could fly with them shoes. It was crazy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, Jordan's, uh, they really didn't make the uh, a good splash. Cause you know, he was out of the game when the nines and the tens was out. He came back at the latter part of the, that, uh, year when the tens was out. And he wore the 11s. The 11s was fresh. The 11s was like really the hot. That shit was hot. And, but the thing, even when the 11s came out, that was a huge year because the Grand Hill 2 came out. And, um, you could see a lot, a lot, a lot of people, like that's the one that they call from the All Eyes on Me, uh, um, cover because Tupac had wore them inside the, uh, cover of All Eyes on Me if you had the CD or the tape. From back then, he had worn, but that shoe was so fresh back then. It was so many shoes that came out when the 11s came out that were fresh. But I'm just taking y'all down memory lane. It's good to to reminisce on this um, on these times and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know. I hope that y'all realize that this is way bigger than MJ. This game is way, way, way bigger than MJ. Yeah, yeah, a lot bigger than MJ, because I had to bring out the feelings, I had to bring out the Reeboks, and back when I was a kid, um, Adidas, um, Adidas wasn't a a huge shoot, they had just got through with their little run with Run DMC and all of that, but they were not a big time shoe when I was a kid, you know. Um, at some point, they had retro what, what was called the top tens, which is these here. Is this shoe here? This is the shoe that that really <clears throat> this was started it. This was the top ten players in the league, and included uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar and uh, some other cats. I I, I don't know because I wasn't around back then. Uh, and this came out in '79, and um, there were a lot of, uh, like, all of these is top 10s. Like, I love the top 10 because <clears throat> it's, it's a nice shoe just like the Air Jordan 1. And uh, if you notice it, like, that's one of the OG colorways right here. And I got the 30-year anniversary one. Um, but, yeah, this is, like, a dope-ass shoe. That came out back when, and and they end up retroing those in '97 or '98. I know at least in Detroit we got them in '97. Uh, no, it was like '96, '97 uh, school year. So that must have been the year when the Twelves came out, and uh, that was like huge. Everybody was like, "Thank God!" And so you had to go back to to the '80s being in school, and I wasn't in school in the '80s. I started. I ain't started school until 89, you feel me? So, um, you had to go back to the 80s when um, forms and concords ruled, excuse me once again, um, when concords and forms ruled, top tens ruled in the schools. Because I want to say the forms was like one of the first shoes to cost $100. Um, but, uh, when, but see, they was trying to make a comeback with Kobe when I was in school, and that was that 96, 97 school year, uh, because those, uh, what y'all call the crazy eights, that was the crazy eight era, when he wore those crazy eights back then, and he, I think he wore those for a couple of years, but, yeah, and then, like, issues didn't really take off with Adidas until they dropped, uh, this video is turning longer than I, what I, that I thought, y'all. But I mean, I think we get some good, good content. Let me know in the comment boxes or subscribe. But uh, yeah, his shoe didn't take off until to these joints came out. To those came out. That's when his shoe first sold. Like his shoe was banging when them came out. But uh, yeah, let me see. I got another one. That's a PE that's fresh as hell. Um, 
I'm going to sign it here. It's in a Nike box because it was fresh as hell. Uh, yeah. The dames. Yeah, it's a, it's a PE. I'm going to go through it right quick. I didn't drop some stuff. But I'm going to go through it real quick. You see, that's a sample. But yeah, the PE. That, that one was cold with the roses all over it. But anyway, his shoe didn't take off to the end. So... Uh, it's hard for me to to like the Kobe. It, it it took me a long time for the Kobe line to grow on me, uh, because that's the Kobe line that I knew. But uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'm just gonna be keep trying to bring y'all dope content. Like I said, as I get this editing thing down, um, you know, I'll be tr delivering um, you know, uh, much more semantic uh, videos uh, or cinematic videos. Um, so uh, thanks y'all for watching. And it's your boy Shot. One to all my peeps out there.